Today on a special Locked On crossover event, the Rockies have had to turn to the farm a little bit more than they anticipated. Is the future bright at 20th in Blake? Do they have any starting pitching depth? Can the Rockies actually let the kids play? You are Locked On Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Rock on Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked on Rockies podcast, a special Locked on Rockies podcast today where we are getting an update on the farm system and a lot of these players that you've been watching play at the major league level this year as the Rockies have gone young a little bit this year. We're getting a full update today with Lindsey Crosby of the Locked On MLB Prospects show. He's going to bring us all sorts of updates. One of our favorite and most popular episodes and crossovers uh, that we have here on the show. But hey, you can catch all of the Rockies action on the SiriusXM app or on SiriusXM. All you got to do is just search Rockies and you can catch the hometown broadcast. All you got to do is check it out there. And we thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Free and streaming on every stream streaming service. If you're an everydayer out there, thank you for tuning in. Now, let's bring him in. The man, the myth, the legend himself. Lindsey Crosby's here. The beard getting better and better as the season's going on. One of the busiest uh baseball guys out there. If I Lindsey, this season, not only are you doing this, you are covering Auburn baseball. Is it Auburn mm-hmm. that I that it is and and more as well, correct? Yes, it is Auburn University uh, for Sports Illustrated. It's year two of doing that. And then I'm also helping Sports Illustrated with their Atlanta Braves coverage this year. So touching MLB, touching the minor leagues through this, touching college baseball kind of helps because they all build on each other, right? A lot of these college guys in the SEC are the same guys we're going to be talking about in the draft in July. And then obviously they'll make their way to the bigs. So it all ties together, but it's a lot of baseball right now. <laughs> a lot of baseball, but I'm going to complete from great and winning baseball to not rebuilding, but rebuilding baseball. There's a lot, honestly, to be interested by when it comes to the Rockies and prospects. This is a team mm-hmm. that due to injury this year has had to turn to a lot of prospects. And we're going to kind of go through the whole gambit, but so far, Lindsay, how do you think the Rockies have handled the season with their call-ups, with the players they've chosen to to fill in for some of these injuries? This is a Rockies team that is missing Herman Marquez, Antonio Senzatella, Brandon Rogers, uh, Sean Bouchard was an exciting young guy that was going to play in his missing time, uh, and the list can go on and on. How do you think the Rockies have navigated their injuries this year and the choices they've made with the players uh, from their system? So for me, the two things that I notice is it's guys like Montero, for instance, that have done statistically pretty well in AAA, but it hasn't yet translated to MLB. And so it's like, okay, let's bring them. Let's give them a chance at the major league level. Or it's guys uh, like Ezekiel Tovar, tons of talent. We know defensively he can hang and the stats bear that out. But we need to see how he does against MLB quality pitching, against that sequencing, the velocity, the spin, things like that. And so they're picking the right guys as far as we still have unanswered questions. We know talent's there. We know potential's there. But they need, like, we have to throw them in the deep end. And it's something where they, they've kind of staggered it a bit. You don't have five rookies playing every day. It's not like the Royals last year where it's nothing but young players. But... They've done a good job of getting them up, putting them in positions to be successful and letting their comfort and their talent dictate whether they sink or swim with varying levels of success. Brenton Doyle looks pretty good right now. Montero obviously struggled and, you know, ultimately moved back to AAA. So I like the decisions that they've made and I'm excited to see how much more runway some of these guys get uh, to figure it out at the major league level versus having to go back to Albuquerque. Is throwing them in the deep end the most effective way to to handle this? I mean, personally, I think uh, going through the challenges of the season and, and the experience matters. Uh, and I, I think especially in a season like this for the Rockies where 
it's it's they've played better baseball of late it has been a mm -hmm. better last three weeks than the first three weeks of the season but it's still you know currently uh, as of recording this uh, you know the, the the rangers have just brought down the thunder uh in in this series and uh so it's i mean i, I want to see more but it is can you really go rain or Royals status? Can the Rockies really afford to have an infield of at one point this season, Montero and uh, Tovar and then Harold Castro, uh, Alan Trejo, and then Michael Tolia with, uh, you know, more of your outfielders out there with, with Brenton Doyle in center. Can, can the Rockies really, really afford to do that? And I don't think the Rockies would do that. Yeah. It, it feels like something they wouldn't necessarily do. And to me, it's about, well, why do we not know if this guy is MLB caliber or not? So, like for Tovar, he needed to get exposure to the MLB level. Uh, the game power hasn't developed, and we knew he wasn't there yet with that, but he needed to see MLB caliber breaking pitches, right? So he needed to see sliders. He needed to see curveballs. He's not doing great with MLB caliber stuff. 121 batting average, 207 slugging. Doesn't have a hit on a curveball yet this year. May not have realized that, but it's something where Tovar needed to see one um, defensively. His defense can hang at the major league level. He's 91st first percentile and outs above average. Uh, so like there's things like that. You guys who, who need to be exposed to it so you can see how good they are versus guys like a Drew Romo, for instance, very advanced defensively, fantastic receiver. But the offense is very much a work in progress. He's not a guy you want to throw in the deep end because he's still learning proper form, proper mechanics about hitting, whereas Tovar is working on adjusting to the quality of the pitching. So they've made some of the right decisions. Tovar again, Montero, as far as guys who need to be exposed to the MLB level, because either they've never done it before and they have the aptitude for it, like Tovar, or Montero, something where he's hitting really well in AAA and arguably he's not going to get significantly better in AAA. I mean, like right now on the season, 359, 415, 739 in AAA. He needs to, like, he's not learning at AAA. He needs to learn against the MLB caliber guys. And they kind of saw, here's what he struggled with at the major league level. He struggled with spin, specifically curveballs. He also did not have a hit on a curveball while he was up. Uh, defensively, he struggled moving towards the bag. He struggled moving in that barehanded scoop and throw to first. And so they're making the right decisions on it. And you can't throw every prospect in the deep end, but the ones they've chosen are the ones who either needed to be thrown, like Montero, or had the talent to possibly not sink, like Tovar. Is Montero's future really at third base? I'm, I don't. I'm starting to really. If this defense is the issue, that's what's holding him back. The Rockies can't sit there and keep that bat. If he because Montero can hit major league pitching, we know we we saw enough last year and even this year. There are the struggles, but mm -hmm. the guy can mash. And if he can get in the rhythm, and I think if he knew he was playing and playing consistently, even in a DH role or something like that, that's good things for him. I don't think third base is the. I, I think the Rockies are with the contract of Ryan McMahon with with how much I don't know how much the Rockies really want to admit defeat ever with Ryan McMahon. I mean Ryan McMahon still isn't hitting that offensive threshold, and that's the biggest dilemma, especially with these two. I'm more confident in Montero's bat moving forward than Ryan McMahon's bat at this point. I've seen Ryan McMahon now for a multiple years, but on the flip side. Ryan McMahon's going to save the Rockies a heck of a lot more runs than Ailerice Montero is playing defense. It really is two sides of a coin. I wish one of them could figure it together and be the, the combination of the both. If you put them together, they're a fantastic right. baseball player. No, no, it's, it's, I do think Montero ultimately needs to be at first base. And you have that struggle of Michael Toglia's best position is probably first base as well. But it, it, it's something where. You've given McMahon enough chances now. He's 28 years old. I mean, he's been up. He's got, what, 2,300 plate attempts, 2,000-plus at-bats at the major league level. In fantasy, I was kind of banking on a Ryan McMahon breakout this year, too, and it just never really happened. And so I understand the desire of we need some sort of defensive consistency in the lineup. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think Montero's a first baseman simply because the struggles that he has – are going to be mitigated 
playing first base. You have a rangy second baseman next to you. You're not moving to the right as much. He is above average moving to the left. So that's nice. You don't have those charging plays in as much at first base. A lot of those end up being taken by the pitcher. So his future is first base. And ideally, somebody would step up to be that that third baseman. So McMahon's either playing second or he's a utility guy. But you need to have Montero, you need to have Toglia playing almost every day because you've got to figure, you've got, they've got to get over that learning curve. And they just haven't had a chance to do that. Uh, when they either go down to AAA or like Toglia are not a primary option at really any position and play in a backup capacity or utility capacity. Let's talk about some names to to think about. Let's talk about some uh, who's doing good, who, who's hot and who's not in terms of uh, prospects. And I want to dive into a little bit of uh, pitching uh, and pitching depth and uh, pitching development for the Colorado Rockies. We're going to get to all that and more coming up here in segment number two. But before that, I want to tell you about our friends at Rocket Money. And I know you're like me, especially during prime sports time where you sign up for a trial here, you sign up for a trial there, you want to watch Auburn baseball on, on Tuesday, and you got NBA Finals the next day, and you're signing up for all these streaming services, but you don't actually remember doing that and you want to keep up for it. Well, Rocket Money is going to help take care of that for you because Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your own unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you, and for any you don't want to pay for anymore, all you got to do is just hit cancel, and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. So stop throwing away your money, maybe even $700 worth of money. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. That's rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB, rocketmoney.com slash locked on. MLB. This is a special Locked On crossover event, Locked On MLB Prospects, Locked On Rockies. We thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Shout outs to our everydayers out there. You can support the shows by subscribing to the YouTube channels of both shows. If you want to be uh, well informed, deeply informed about the future of Major League Baseball and all the areas in between. Lindsey Crosby is your guy, and he's my guy on the show today. Lindsey, let's start. Uh, you had a whole list. Let's go with it. Let's do classic game show here. Who's hot? Who's not? Rockies prospects, either at the major league level or at, or a certain there. Isotopes are a pretty good team, I think. I like the isotopes. They're fun to watch. Uh, good camera angle. Not a lot of minor league teams have the great camera angles. But uh, some something that I'm really enjoying is is trying I'm trying to find it here it's driving me nuts at the at the moment it was Britton Doyle was fun to watch there obviously tons of fun to watch in MLB but their their rotation is kind of interesting because they've kind of got like three key guys and then the rest of the starters will kind of rotate around so it's, it sounds it's, very familiar to how they operate at the major league level there you go <laughs> it's it's like Logan Allen Josh Rogers Jeff Criswell are kind of the guys and Criswell is the one for me that I really find interesting because he's, I feel like he's that close to being major league ready. Now the stats this year look awful. So just like up front, I'm acknowledging the stats don't look great. He came over last year uh, in the, the Chad Smith deal. And so uh, one in four in Albuquerque and nine appearances, seven starts, eight, three, five ERA. So again, Criswell's stats don't look great, but he's working on stuff. The The pitches themselves, he's got four pitches that are all average to above average. And again, that close. Four-seam fastball, he can touch 97 with it. It's got some good run to it. Uh, average is about 93, 94. I want to see a tick or two on that. Uh, the changeup, I really love he can throw a changeup to a righty or a lefty. Not something a lot of guys are comfortable doing. He can throw it for a strike. Uh, sliders, one of those kind of classic tighter, uh, tighter sliders since the mid '80s, and then the curveball. I think if he can get the curveball where he's comfortable using it outside of just early in the count to steal a strike, uh, he's 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 right about there. And you can tell he's trying to throw harder. He's got the effort in his delivery. 
makes me a little bit nervous just because of the whole perspective of there are no such thing as pitching prospects and they always get hurt. But he's really fun to watch because, again, that close to being there. Like, I mean, he, he was in the College World Series in 2019. That's where I first saw him for Michigan, followed him all the way through, excited when he joined the Rockies system. And he's just, he's that close, throws tons of strikes. The walks are up a little bit this year as he's working on sequencing better. But just reminds me a lot of Chris Bassett. And we've seen what Chris Bassett has been able to do. And so I'm thinking, okay, all right, this is the year for Jeff Criswell. And again, statistically, it's not great, but the potential's there and he absolutely can be there. So if you're watching Albuquerque and you're trying to catch one of the starts, try to catch his in the month of May. 371 ERA in three starts. He's pitched something like 17 innings. And he I think he's given up a total of maybe seven runs. So looking really good. He's walked, he walked only two guys in his last two starts. He struck out 11 across those last two. Really kind of turned it on in May. Yeah, I'd love to hear that. Love to see that. Um, you mentioned him a little bit. Is can we can we continue to be all aboard the the Brenton Doyle train? The foundation seems to be there, especially for center fielder at Coors Field. He's already made some spectacular defensive plays. He changes the entire landscape when it comes to aggressiveness on base paths. He was the Rockies' leader in stolen bases on after being with the club for two days. <laughs> Can we expect this to? I mean, I, I think he's going to face the same struggles. It's a young guy, and I think mm -hmm. the second time through for a lot of these teams, the Dodgers are going to have his number. I think a lot of these teams are going to see him a lot are going to figure him out a little bit more this year, but that's young guy stuff. If he's still making great plays and playing a good center field in uh chorus, how encouraged should I be, especially with the Rockies designating Jonathan Daza Daza, uh, uh, of course does end up back in Albuquerque and still with the system for the Rockies after not being claimed. But uh, why do you think the Rockies went Doyle over Daza? I, it's something where, he needed to, again, he needed to test some of that stuff at the major league level. The thing that's been surprising for me, like we knew Brendan Doyle, super athletic. I mean, he, he's incredibly athletic, tons of tools. The question was always pitch recognition and being incredibly aggressive. And I've noticed he's, he's great against righties. He struggles against lefties. But some of the issues, and this was surprising and re reason why I'm hopeful, is... The pitch recognition, he's struggling on fastballs up in the zone. And that's typically not a thing that he's had trouble with. And so that's why I'm excited about the fact that, like, the on base of 281, I think that's going to get better as he better sees those MLB caliber fastballs where you're able to elevate it for a strike. It's got that extra ride up in the zone. Um, the, the slugging's absolutely there. Little bit of concern about lefties. He's like 158, 200 is the slash line. And he seems to struggle with picking up breaking stuff and figuring out when it's when it's on the black, is it gonna be a ball or a strike? Uh, and and he's not gonna face guys in Albuquerque who can consistently command those pitches to the edges of the strike zone. So that's why I think it was a good move to call him up, let him learn what that looks like in live action versus hoping he picks it up twice or three times a week from a guy who may come through when they're playing in Las Vegas or something like that. Um, it was the right decision that, like you said, the defense looks great. He's able to, to make it work. The speed translates. The arm is really good. He can play all three positions. And I think just in the short time he's been up, I, it already makes me want to upgrade the hit tool to closer to average. And when you combine that with the fact that we know his power is above average, the speed's there. Uh, once he gets used to recognizing uh, a breaking pitch for a ball or a strike out of the hand, especially from a lefty, then ceiling's the limit. But he, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, he should be up for a while because the struggles that he has are, it feels like they're fixable because it's a matter of just getting used to seeing a slider or a curveball out of the hand of a lefty. Who... Who do you who needs to be up and who needs to be playing for the Rockies and how do you handle the log jam at first base and in the outfield? Uh, if you if you are running the Rockies and say this trend continues and you are it's all star game is passed. You are fifth place. Maybe, the, you know, there's people hanging around, but Dodgers right. are up there. Padres are figuring it out, yada, yada, yada. Rockies are still on the course. They are now and playing playing like they are now where it's 
scrappy, fun, winning some series, not 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 the April Rockies of this season where things right. were where I, you know, we it was getting to the point where it's doesn't matter. Blow it all up and just let any of all the all the prospects play. And they turned it around a little bit. Where do you think the Rockies should go and how do you think they should handle the trade deadline? And what do you think the lineup will look like post trade deadline for the Rockies? You need to find a way to have a younger infield and 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 outfield too, really. Like looking at the outfield now and seeing where Charlie Blackman's your DH at what 37 now. You've got Jerickson Profar, Chris Bryant. I'm not saying I don't think you can trade Chris Bryant. And and but to me, it's something where Jerickson Profar is not going to be the left fielder in the next winning Rockies team. So he's probably one of those guys that needs to be made available at the deadline for not much because Michael Toglia can play some corner outfield. He's not going to be amazing, but he's going to be good enough. It's going to get him in the lineup every day, and that gives you the option to have somebody like El Haris Montero at first. Mike Moustakis, uh, he's a very nice guy. From what I've heard, you can launch him into the sun for all that matters. I don't really see a reason why uh, he needs to be getting that playtime every day because you've got so many young guys to figure out what to do. Uh, if it's me, I've got uh, Montero. He gets occasional chances at third when Togli is at first, but I want Toglia in the lineup almost every day, somewhere between the outfield and first base. I want Montero mostly at first, but playing a little bit of third. You can move McMahon to second on those days. Uh, you need to keep uh, Tovar at short every day, which they, for the most part they have. And... Give those guys a chance to get extended run where they're not looking over their shoulder. Uh, the thing that I like to, to the the comparison I like to make on this is it. And for the Rockies listeners, I'm a Braves fan, group of Braves fan, and something a lot of people always talk about is how the Braves seem to find these really, like really good pitchers. And so people point to Kyle Wright. He won 21 games last year, led led baseball in that. He had 21 games in the bigs. Bef going into last year, uh, but it was spread over like three seasons, uh, ERA of six and a half. And it, the issue was every time he stumbled once, he was sent back down. And so he's constantly looking over his shoulder. He's playing tight. He couldn't get comfortable in the rotation because he knew if this pitch isn't perfect, I'm going back to triple A. And it kind of feels like when you have veterans on this team, like a Moustakis, like a Profar, that are not moving the needle as far as making you a contender, that's how these young guys are feeling. So find a way to clear, whether it's a DFA, a trade, at this point, I don't think it matters. Find a way to, uh, to, to get some of these youngsters in the lineup on a consistent basis. Let them know, hey, the next month, you are playing every day. You, the month of July is yours. The month of August is yours. This is your job. We're going to maybe move you around from, from day to day, but for the most part, you are playing every single day. Stop looking over your shoulder. Focus on getting better. Learn from a Charlie Blackman. Learn from a Ryan McMahon as far as defense goes. <laughs> and, and, and have a chance to get comfortable because that's what they haven't really been able to do, just the shuffling back and forth from AAA to the bigs or moving between a starting role and the bench like Toglia has. I think Brendan Rodgers is a perfect example of that if Rockies fans are looking for that. I mean, the health has been the biggest issue for Brendan Rodgers, but since mm -hmm. the Rockies told Brendan Rodgers he was the second baseman outside of his cold start last year, we saw him completely able to turn it around. And uh, I'm with you. There's, if, there's no real reason if the Rockies are out of contention that – C.J. Crone, Mike Moustakis, Jerkson Profar, Randall Gritchick are taking at-bats over your young guys. It simply does not make sense because you, you, you nailed it. Those players are not helping the Rockies in the future. Chris Bryant and his contract, that's a different story. And, I mean, yeah. Chris Bryant might... Hey, you know, he might not be hitting for power, but if Chris Bryant's just going to hit singles for the rest of my life and they're clutch singles, you know what? And <laughs> play a fine right field, we can take it. But I I'm I'm I would love to see. I'm really excited to see the hopefully at one point this season when it is the young guy infield. When it is that yeah. time, you know, let Montero get a chance. The A's are in town, you're playing Oakland. 
let Montero play some third base and 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 that Tovar I'm 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 pretty pumped on. I think the bat's going to come. I mean, I think I, what he's flashing is uh, is really exciting. Um, don't want to go too overboard, but I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I think the foundation of the Rockies having another really exciting young shortstop is great, and and Tovar being uh, the third, I believe, the third youngest player in the entire league right now, uh, and is 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 a factor there. Lindsay, I want to wrap things up with a, a focus mostly on pitching here and uh, just kind of a couple of states of that and talk about two pitchers that got to make their debuts and how important it is just for a player like Riley Pint. Even though it didn't go well and he went right back down, just to have that moment for these young guys. I want to talk about that and more coming up here in segment number three. But before I do that, I want to tell you about our friends at Bird Dogs. And folks, summer is here. I'm shorts 24-7 type of guy. Lindsay, I'm sure, you know, oh, yeah. covering covering Southern sports. I would imagine it's shorts weather very much uh, for most of the year. And Bird Dogs got you covered. Why? Because they are good and stylish, but very comfortable, very breathable, and very easy to maneuver in. What's, wor- what's tough for me, especially a guy like me, who kind of runs a little stockier, it's shorts are a little bit tough because especially khaki ones, they're a little stiff, not easy to move around. Bird Dogs got me covered. I was rocking them all after they sent us them, and uh, it was a great style. I got a lot of compliments, but above all, for me especially, they were comfortable and felt great. And the secret hidden cheat code of Bird Dogs, zipper pockets. That's one of my favorite things. It's one of those things that they don't tell you about, but then you get them and you realize, oh, hey, if I want to use these to run or hike or do some outdoor activities, I can put my phone, I can put my wallet safely in those zipper pockets. So go check out birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. And when you enter the promo code, you are uh, the promo code locked on MLB, I should say, not the promo code you. Promo code code locked on MLB. They're going to throw in a free custom bird dogs, Yeti style tumbler with every order. So go get your next favorite pair of shorts at birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. This is a locked on crossover event between locked on MLB prospects and locked on Rockies. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Uh, Lindsay, we're running a little bit late, but we can't, we'd be amiss if we weren't going to talk Rockies and pitching, honestly. Mm -hmm. You look at the overall depth of Rockies pitching and you look at this season, and the Rockies have had to call on some young guys, and some of them have been, you know, flashed some, some interesting stuff. Ryan Feltner, before unfortunately taking a crazy uh, bit, uh hit off of a bat to the face was, was had some strong starts noah davis was was uh, had a couple of strong starts before he got hurt the injury bug has been bu- tough but i still can't say i'm overall confident in the future of this rockies rotation especially as they're uh, the rockies might not have ramon marquez next year with with contract and stuff and so is there anything to feel more confident about in this rotation or are we the Rockies don't seem like they're developing the next the next guy maybe uh maybe just a series of three through fives in a traditional rotation so we talked after the draft about how they got a lot better about drafting guys that better fit the conditions there in Colorado and some of the early stats for some of these guys aren't great but I'm still excited about these additions uh Carson Palmquist out of Miami uh, has like a four and a half ERA in high A Spokane right now, but he's a really interesting as far as what he does works really well and should translate to altitude. And all of these guys just need little minor, small tweaks to raise their ceilings from number four, number five. So like Palmquist, for instance, uh, was a reliever most of the time in college, started his final year, got drafted, but he's a, he's a fastball changeup slider guy, changeup's the best pitch, which shouldn't be affected that much by the altitude, has a has a big sweeper that'll do really well looking different from the slider, all comes out of a really unique, like lefty, almost sidearm slot. So a lot of deception and things there. All you really have to do is work on a little bit of extra velocity because he's sitting low 90s. But when he was a reliever, he was easily mid 90s. So you know it's in there. It's just a matter of stamina. Uh, I'm a big fan of his... Gabriel Hughes, another guy from you know from last year, kind of excited. 
I think he can be a number three. The, again, the numbers don't look great in Spokane, 716 ERA. But uh, Hat has that fastball with the power, can run it up to 97, 98. Uh, again, secondary pitches that work, shorter slider with really high spin on it, a cutter, things that should translate. And so it'll take a little bit of time, but they've done a better job at finding guys who should translate to Colorado because that's been the big issue is finding pitchers that are effective at home. And statistically, the stuff doesn't look great right now. One small sample sizes. Hughes has like 25 innings pitched on the year, but also these guys are learning how to be pros and they're learning how to adjust their stuff. I still feel good about the potential, but like, like you said, I am still looking for that dude. Who's going to be like the number one. You're still missing that slam dunk, uh, no doubt guy. And I would expect to see going after some, like I'd love to see a little bit more focus like last year on some college pitching, especially early in this year's draft, because it should be a pretty good class for that. Trying to find, since you've got some position players who are, you have a ton of outfielders that I'm really excited about. Jordan Beck and Yankul Fernandez. Hunter Goodman looks like he could play first or left or, or, or catch, whatever but finding some more pitchers because you're looking for those top-of-the-rotation guys. I think that's probably the key when you go into this year's draft and when you go into the trade deadline. Looking for, if you're selling something, let's prioritize getting high-potential arms back. Yeah, I think that's really going to be the seat. The, the, the Rockies are moving. It's just moved for, high, I think, double to triple A pitchers and and mm -hmm. just take some flyers on some guys add some depth there please no more outfielders because it's just going to keep confusing me and zach van and i know what you want to do uh, i kind of want to hit a, just a couple of rapid fire things here yeah. uh before we we go here of course how significant and how important is it for a player especially like riley pint uh for players like riley pint and carl kaufman to uh to get their debuts uh here in a rockies uniform what does it mean to those guys stat lines aren't the prettiest but they made it. They, they they can say they pitched in a major league game. What does that mean for these young guys? Riley Pines a validation that like, hey, you didn't waste a number a number four overall pick, right? Uh, came up like you said, didn't look absolutely amazing, but got in a game. I mean, you know, sinker cutter showed that he can be a useful piece at the major league level with a little bit of refinement. So it's a validation of the long work that he's put in. I mean, he was Rule Five eligible at one point. Uh, but then also it shows that like you're able to maximize the value of the guys that you have in the organization. And a lot of teams almost kind of give up on their guys at times. And, and this is something where it's like, no, we're going to find a way to use them. Yeah. Maybe Kaufman didn't stick as a starter for us, but we're going to use them in relief. If we have to, we're going to make them look good. In this case, I actually think he, he, he did start that one game, like four and a third innings. Mm -hmm. uh, but still it's, it's, we're going to get our, we're going to get something out of these guys. We're going to figure out what they do well, and then try to put them in the best position to succeed. It was the best. It was one of the better matchups he could have had as far as, you know, four seamer slider two seamer kind of thing. Uh, bit big to me to get guys to the bigs. Cause that's half the battle, right? It 90% of players never see the big leagues, but your first rounders need to be showing up. So getting pint was big. Um, Kaufman was a second rounder, but still first rounders need to get to the big second rounders 50, 50. You should try to get them there too. They got both those guys up. That's a success. That's a win right there. Not every team can say that. I agree. Uh, is this team going to move on from any prospects? There's going to be some guys, some of the, I, I think you're going to see some change in pitching. You're going to see some of the pitchers where they're going to say, okay, we better understand what works and what doesn't work. And we are now, it's something that I've noticed looking at this team. Uh, we are now putting more of the focus on you have to do some of this work and you have to buy into what we're doing. It's not just a change in uh, how we draft. It's a change in how we develop and the mindset we're trying to instill. And there's guys that don't necessarily buy into what they want to do. You're going to see them move on from some guys. And there was actually some cuts, I think, just last week. Uh, some 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 guys who were in extended spring and then just kind of vanished. So you're going to see some more of that. But I think right now you're probably not going to get rid of any of your higher up prospects simply because there's not a ton of, like we said, high level pitching to be excited about. 
And so you want to try to just do as much work as you can to see if any of these guys can can raise that ceiling before you let them go. And we're just not quite there yet with some of these guys. All right. Do we see Veen this year? I, I see. I don't think we do. He has to uh, adjust to the guys that have better command in double A. If you something that, that I've noticed is he's struggling with guys who can same thing we we talked about for a uh, for a Doyle. He's struggling with guys who can command their pitches instead of just having control to throw it for a strike. If you can, he's getting prone to chasing off the plate, things like that. It's an adjustment period, but I think he's already starting to make that adjustment. And as the power comes in, I think you see him probably in AAA by the end of the year. I don't think you see him in uh, Colorado until 24. Lindsey Crosby, host of Locked On MLB Prospects, giving us all. We could have gone for another. We have plenty more to talk about with this Rockies team. I think that's a usual theme of our crossover episodes, but we got to we gotta call it here. <laughs> got to thank you uh, again, Lindsey. Where can they find you? Where can they follow all your work? I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball, the show Locked On MLB Prospects, available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. We're on uh, Twitter at Locked On Farm. And if you have questions for the show, send them to us. We do that at a mailbag every single Monday. And hey, that means, and he does do Rocky's episodes. I can promise you he's not someone that sleeps on Rocky's prospects. I promise. Uh, if you're out there uh, curious about the Rockies, at Paul Holden 33 if you want to follow me, or at LO Rockies, Locked on Rockies on YouTube. Thank you all so much for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and streaming on your favorite streaming service. You can catch all the action, all the Colorado Rowdy, all the Colorado Rockies action on the Sirius XM app or on Sirius XM. Folks, until next time, this is Paul Holden saying so long from the Locked On Podcast Network.